Now in Unreal Engine, I made myself a little cosmic dance room where we're going to make our dance party with some changing lights. Something we'll be focusing on are these lights colors, then we'll work with the lights intensity a little later. The first thing we are going to do is go into the levels blueprints. I already have a few things set up in advance and I'll briefly go over what you're looking at. At the beginning of play, we're going to get all actors of the class spotlight. So basically all 12 spotlights I currently have in the scene. And I'm going to set it to a spotlights array variable that I simply named spotlights. Now let's move on to playing our music from Wise. Extending from our set spotlights, we're going to add a post event. The event that we're posting is our play main music, and the actor that we want to post the music to is the player. In order to get a reference to the player, we're going to just get player controller. There's more I would like to achieve with this post event, so I'm going to hit this arrow to give me more options to work with. Now we'll see the callback information that we need. So let's start with callback mask. Hovering over the options, you'll see that the callback mask basically asks, when do we want a callback from WISE? Do we want a callback when the event ends? Do we want a callback at a specific duration? Well, in this case, we want our lights to change color at the beat of the music. So the music sync beats mask works perfectly. So whenever the music hits a beat, we want a certain function to trigger. That's what the post event callback is for. Drag away from post event callback and make a new event. You can name it however you like, but I'm going to call mine set light color. Now I'm going to change this to a function I already made, set random light color. Let me double click this so I can go over what's going on in here. Using the spotlights variable I made earlier, I'm going to cycle through every spotlight in the array, grab their spotlight component, and I'm going to set their light color using random values in an HSV to RGB function. And this will happen every beat. Let's see how that all looks in game. That looks pretty good, but I think we could do a little better. The saxophones hit a peak note towards the end of the music before the repeats, so what if we made the lights grow brighter when this happens? In order to achieve this, we won't want to sing to the beat of the music. We'll want to use a callback after we reach some kind of cue. Let's head back to Wise really quick. In our main music segment, you may recall this impact marker right here. This is called a custom cue, and this will be the thing that we'll be able to reference from Unreal Engine. To so make a custom queue, all you have to do is right click anywhere on the timeline or track and select add custom queue. You can do the same thing by hitting the insert key. That's all we need. Let's head back to our level blueprint. Now we're going to need a new callback mask for our event to react to. So let's go back into our list. Since we're using a queue, then music sync user queue is going to be the way to go for us. But before selecting it, hover over it for a moment to see the note that it provides. AK callback info can be cast to AK music sync callback info. That information will come in handy in a moment. So select this and callback mask can should now say multiple, which is great because we can use our cue callback simultaneously with our beat callback. Let's check out our set light color event. And for now, let's disconnect the set random light color function. Before I move forward, I should consider the future. What if I make several cues for the same music, like a cue for a bridge and another for a chorus? but I only want my light's intensity to react to the impact cue. Then I'm going to need Wise to give me some information about the cue that's being sent in. In this case, we need the cue's name. That's what we're going to use the AK Music Sync callback info for. So as the callback mask note explained, we can cast our callback info from set light color to AK Music Sync callback info. Really quick, we're going to reconnect our set random light color. After that, we're going to check to see if the queue we pass in is named impact. Thankfully, I have a macro named isImpact, which does just that for us. This macro is very simple. It's going to take our callback info, check the name of that callback info's queue, and it's going to compare it to the word impact. If they're the same, then it'll return true. If they're not, then it'll return false. So I'm going to make sure our AK music sync callback info is connected to that. Now that we are passing in our queue and we know that its name is impact, we can finally increase our light's intensity, which I have a little code block already rigged up and ready to go to do just that. Some of this may seem new to you, so I'll go over it real quick for you. So let's start with the set light intensity function, which I made for the purpose of this demonstration. Going into it, it should look similar to the set random light color function, 
The only thing that might look odd is this lerp function. Lerp stands for linear interpolation. I'll link to some documentation in order to further your knowledge on what lerping is, but the basic goal of a lerp is to be able to gradually go from one value to the next. So in our current context, this light's intensity will gradually go from a value of 30, which is what it is now, to a value of 500. This makes sure that the lights don't suddenly flicker to a very high brightness in a single frame. Now, in this current context, lerp does not function by itself. It doesn't inherently know to go from the value from point A to point B, and it doesn't know how quickly to go from point A to point B. That's why we are also using a timeline, which I have set up to go from 0 to 1 linearly over the course of 1 second. Timeline documentation will also be linked in the Google Doc, found in the description of this video. Finally, we have this do once function, which its goal is right in the name. Do whatever is after this once. The only reason this is here is to ensure that the light doesn't suddenly shift back to the darker intensity and back up to the full intensity every single time that we hit our impact cue. <sighs> that was a lot. But as long as you understand cues and callbacks, then the basis of my job was done correctly. Let's see how that looks now. It looks really cool. Now we're having an amazing dance party. And based on the amount of callbacks we have access to, we can do so much with our music to make this even more cool. But for now, I'm going to briefly go away from the music to demonstrate a unique callback known as a marker callback. Unlike cues, markers are directly embedded alongside the wavelengths of sound files using wavelength editors like SoundForge. However, we can do it in WISE too. In my actor music hierarchy, I have two SFX already prepared. There's rhythmic ticking, And this metal hits. The goal for this little experiment is to play the metal hit at a certain point in a rhythmic ticking. There's a number of ways we can go about doing this, but we're going to approach it using callbacks. So I'm going to go into the rhythmic ticking and select our source file for the content editor, which will open up the wavelength in the source editor. You may notice that I have already placed a marker in here right at the impact of the third load drone. Just like with the cue from earlier, you can add a marker by right-clicking anywhere on the timeline and selecting Add Marker. You can name this marker by double-clicking on it, but for now, I'm going to keep it blank. Let's return to our level blueprint one last time. This setup is going to be similar to our beat callback, so I'm just going to go over it really quick. I'm going to disconnect this entire block of code, and I'm going to replace it with another one that I made in advance. The concept is the same. I'm going to post a play rhythmic ticking event when the player enters the level. This will be posted to the player controller, and we're now going to use a marker callback mask. And if you're curious, callback info can now be cast to AK marker callback info in case you want to get information about your marker. The event that we're going to play upon hitting our marker is our play metal hit event, which is simply going to post our play metal hit event. And it's that simple. We play rhythmic ticking at the beginning, then we hit our marker, which will trigger our metal hit to play. Let's hear how that sounds. Thank you for watching. Before you go, I'd like to hit you with a few challenges that'll help solidify your knowledge on callbacks. Number one, let's say something on the dance floor triggers when the music repeats, like a water feature in a fountain in the center room starts to flow. What music callback or callbacks will we be able to use in order to tell our game engine when the music repeated back to the beginning? Number two, we know how do we get information about the callback, like the name of a cue or marker, but let's now get information from the callback's type. Using the same callback script, continue to have the lights changing color every beat while simultaneously having another function occur on every bar using the music sync bar callback. Setting up the callback mask is easy. Simply select both music sync beat and music sync bar, but things get more tricky when discerning which specific callback is being triggered, since both of these callback masks will frequently trigger at the same time. Here are two hints to help you out if you want them, or you can go off and see if you can figure it out for yourself. Make and set an EAK callback type variable that you will be able to use to compare to Wise's callback. Make use of the callback type output pin on your custom event. 
This will tell you which type of callback is being passed from WISE, whether it be Music Sync Beat or Music Sync Bar. Hey everyone, you made it to the end of the video and hopefully learned a little bit about callbacks. If you decided to complete the challenges above, please feel free to link me to a video of your own demonstration down in the comments. Or you can use the WIDHID challenges hashtag or tag me with at Composer on Twitter so I can help share your work with others. As you're doing these challenges, remember, sound design is a fun and creative field. So have fun and be creative with it. You'll learn more by actively engaging with your learning. And hopefully you'll enjoy it too. For now, this is Jake Gamelin with WIDHID Game Audio. See you next time.